Gate River Run is less than a month away, and we really want to help you get ready to run this race and not get hurt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this week, the main focus is avoiding common injuries. Melanie, you actually suffered an injury yourself the first week of our River Run segments. <laughs> Yeah, you know, we talked about that because I wasn't really paying attention. I was trying to get a hold of my photographer and I hit a crack or something and fell. I'm okay. No long term problems with it. But that really is the key is we're trying to keep people from getting injured as they train and actually the race day as well. So today, Aaron Dankworth and I with the YMCA, we went just under three miles. We got over the Acosta, we got over the Main Street Bridge, and you told me that you pushed me today. I did. I unconsciously pushed you, made sure we got here on time without yeah. you tripping and falling. Exactly. <laughs> it felt good though. And that's the key. Last week we talked about partnership and how that will really help you reach some of your goals. So I thank you for that, for that extra push, and I'm glad that we did it. Okay. So Let's talk about some of the common injuries. Why do people get injured during the trainings? Most of the time they jump way too early into high mileage. Um, you want to start low mileage and you slowly want to gradually build. Uh, sometimes it's just overuse. You're running too much, maybe every day, maybe you know, four days a week or something and you're not giving your body enough rest uh, to really come off that mileage and heal itself. And what I've noticed, because this, this week I kind of got serious, and I've done, you know, every day I've been doing right at three miles, so I'll do a long run on Friday, and I think that's helped me, because you said it's kind of about building that mileage, not necessarily getting in a really long run, but building up to that long run. Exactly. You don't want to jump into high mileage. You're going to start to tear your muscles and, and sometimes even micro tears into your bones. Uh, shin splints are a, a great example of that. So you really want to slowly build up that mileage as you go through the week. All right, we have a graphic that we can show up to show you something that's called runner's knee. You might have heard of that. What exactly is happening when you get this condition? Runner's knee is mostly from overuse. Uh, you'll start to feel a pain around the kneecap or, or behind it. Um, RICE, we use an acronym called RICE, rest, ice, compression, and elevation. It's one of the better treatments for runner knees. Uh, more than anything, it's from that overuse. All right, so let's bring in Miss Ashley here with the YMCA as well. How are you? We appreciate you joining us. You missed the run. How did you miss the run? I did. I know. I was waiting for you guys at the end yeah. of the bridge. Appreciate the support. She was certainly rooting for us. Okay, so you have a couple things. A roller, simply a tennis ball, and these are training things that you can use to help when you have maybe a little bit of pain or something from um, running. Right, absolutely. We have our foam roller, which is one of the most common tools to use. Um, it's great for reaching into the IT band, uh, your lower back, your upper back. It's funny because a lot of people don't realize that their entire body is connected. So when you're running, it's not just your legs, it's not just your knees, it's your entire body through that kinetic chain. Uh, we also use tennis balls. Uh, we, you can get something called plantar fasciitis, which is uh, some tenderness into the, the foot uh, due to, again, tears into the fascia. Um, so along with it, we also have a DIY uh, uh, called a peanut where you just take two t tennis balls and tape them together. You form right. a peanut and that way you're able to get a little bit deeper okay. into your muscles. I think we have time. Let's want to get down and show us a little bit of um, how to use it. Okay. So this is the IT band stretch. Okay. Um, you can foam roll and you roll on your side. So I'm just going to demonstrate and Aaron if you want to talk about it. So what she's doing, like she says, she's placing it right under her IT band. She's using the body weight as pressure. The great thing about that is you can use as little or as much body weight as you want. You want to use as much body weight as you can tolerate. It's not exactly pleasant. It's, um, it's not the most comfortable. It's trend, not yeah. the most comfortable, but it is one of the better things you can do for yourself. Okay. Yeah. All right. We're going to, can we do the peanut? Can you do it with shoes on? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So this is the homemade DIY peanut. <laughs> oh, this is easy. So you stand up and you're actually just going to yeah. roll your feet. You, you stand up again using that pressure. Not comfortable, I know. But the great thing about the peanut is that you can get the inside of your foot. Okay. You just roll your foot in, start to roll out that fascia. You can get the outside of your foot as wow. well. I and need if you this just, in my life. Yeah, it's great. It's a great tool. Yeah. Um, and, and how do you know that you're going too deep? You'll feel it. You'll feel it. <laughs> it should be uncomfortable, but it shouldn't be painful. It shouldn't be intolerable. Okay. All right. Ladies, thank you. We appreciate you. this because that is the key. You don't want to get hurt and then not be able to actually do the race. So keep that in mind. I believe next week we're going to talk about what you wear and when to get rid of your shoes because uh, you warned me that these shoes might have had, have too many miles on them. So certainly all things to think about as we prepare. We are less than a month away from the Gate River Run. Still time to train? Still trying to train it for season. It's running low. It's running out, though. All right.